Okay, this is just going to be a quick tutorial on how to use MPEG Stream Clip to take videos from your DVD and make them into a QuickTime. This works really well if you're an actor and you've just received some DVDs of your work and you need to um, grab some of that footage for your demo reel. So, when you get your DVD, put your DVD in your laptop or computer and uh, make sure that it's turned off, that it's not on autoplay, and uh, just leave it. You need to download one program, and one program alone, it's free, and it's called MPEG Stream Clip. You can see it right there. And once you've downloaded it, just click on it. Of course, this tutorial is for Macs, uh, not for PCs, but it works pretty much the same. So once you open it, uh, you can see we've got this little dicey thing right here. Now we need to take our DVD files and put it into here. The thing you need to know about DVDs is that there are a few different types of files that a DVD comes with. As you can see right here, these are the files. So we have video TS, BUP, IFO, all of that kind of stuff. The only ones you need to be concerned about are the VOB. VOB are the video files. Now, video TS, VOB, is always your DVD menu, so you don't need that. Uh, the only files that you need are VOB that starts with 01, underscore 0, and then 1, and you go from there. So, there is a little bit of a guessing game that you can play. There are other ways to open up the DVD uh, and scroll through, but I like to choose the VOB files from by opening up the DVD itself. So I'm just going to click on one and drag it over into MPEG Stream Clip. Do you want uh, to open this stream as a DVD? Yes. Give it a second. There we go. So it's opened up perfectly. And you can see it. It can play perfectly. So if you want to choose uh, a section, let's say you found your section and you say, okay, this is the part that I want to make into a quick time. All you have to do is, let's say this is my starting point. Once you found your starting point, press I on your keyboard. And once you've found the end, press O. Now, a tip for actors uh, that editors will love is if you know exactly where you want it to start, go a few seconds before that. Editors really appreciate what we call tail ends. We really need a little bit before the start point and a little bit before the or a little bit after the end point. So if something starts at one minute and ends at one minute and thirty seconds, you know choose your end point at. 50 seconds and your out point at 1 minute and 40 seconds as an example. Once you've chosen your in and out point you'll see that there's this gray bar now and that means that your section has been picked. So now we can export the video. Just go up to file and export to QuickTime and we want, to, we want the quality to be 100%. Uh, leave sound the way it is and everybody's video is going to be the same uh, or is going to be different but you, what you want to do is you want to choose unscaled so whichever option says unscaled that's the one you want now everybody's got their own preferences of, as far as exporting quick times go um, my preference is I love deinterlacing and I've found that in more cases than not uh, it's needed so we want Apple Motion JPEG, that's an amazing quality. We want quality 100%. We want it to be unscaled, and we want it to be deinterlaced. Now we just click Make Movie, and it's going to ask you where you want to put it. For the sake of this, I'm going to put this on my desktop. It's going to ask you what you want to call it. In this case, I'm just going to say Test, and I'm going to click Save. And, of course, it depends on how long um, the clip is, that'll depend on how long the export is. A lot of people are like, oh, why is it taking so long? Well, if, 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 if you, you know, uh, wanted to export, you know, two or three minutes, you can expect it to take maybe five or six minutes. It also depends on the speed of your computer. Um, but basically just be patient and your QuickTime will be ready. Once your QuickTime is done, it is ready to give to the editor. And depending on the size of your QuickTime, I generally like to suggest using Dropbox uh, because it's free and it's awesome. And that's about it. That's the process.